God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. These past four weeks, we have waited and anticipated for the birth of our Lord and Savior. Throughout this week, we have waited with hope, with peace, with joy, and love. And we remember those as these Advent candles are lit. As we gather here this evening and remembering the love of God and His Son, our Savior, we light the Christmas candle. God our Father, today the Savior is born and those who live in darkness are seeing a great light. Help us who greet the birth of Christ with joy to live in the light of your Son and to share the good news of your love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who has come into the world. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth, may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of Isaiah. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. 
and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray Psalm 96 in whole verse. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols, but it is the Lord who made the heavens. O oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence, O oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder in all that is in it. Let the field be joyful in all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes, when he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce implicitly and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that, we, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was a descendant from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. 
In that region, there are shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told about them, about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And speak to the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a heel. You're as cuddly as a cactus. You're as charming as an eel, Mr. Grinch. You're a bad banana with a greasy black peel. You're a foul one, Mr. Grinch. You're a nasty, wasty skunk. Your heart is full of unwashed sauce. Your soul is full of gunk, Mr. Grinch. The three words that best describe you are as follows, and I quote, stink, stink, stunk. Stink, stink, stunk. This pretty much sums up this year. This also created a trend on new ornaments for this year with the Grinch on it, holding its mask with the words 2020 stink, stank, stunk. And while we grumble repeating those three words from the Grinch, it would be best for us to fast forward to the end of the movie. After the Grinch slithered down the mountain and into the town, stealing all of their presents and their ribbons, their wrappings and their snoof and their fuzzles and their trailers and trappings, the Grinch returned up to his lair on top of the mountain. In the morning, he leaned over the side of the mountain, hoping to hear all the boo-hoos and cries. And as he listened closely, he heard a sound. And the sound wasn't sad, it sounded glad. The who's and who'sville sang with loud voices, Fahu Horus, Dahu Doris, welcome, welcome Christmas morn. Dahu Doris, Fahu Horus, welcome Christmas day. And he took a moment and thought of something he hadn't before. And what if Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. What if Christmas perhaps means a little bit more? 
His heart grew three times that day, and he packed up a sleigh, and with all that he stole, he descended the mountain to join the Who in Whoville. And as he gathered with them around the feast, they even let him carve the rose feast. Now, I wish I were as clever as Dr. Seuss to make that whole first part rhyme. I am not. But the Grinch certainly reminded us that this year stunk. Many of us, and maybe still are trying to get into the spirit of Christmas. Many of us have struggled with the notion of even celebrating the season at all. Do we bother decorating the house or putting up a Christmas tree? Do we bother listening to Christmas music or watching Hallmark movies? Do we dare to venture out to buy Christmas gifts? Do we dare to care? My husband Daniel loves Christmas. <laughs> like many though, his spirit this year was hit hard. And with his permission, I'm going to share some thoughts that he posted over a month ago. He wrote, as Christmas approaches, I have been feeling increasingly depressed. I am mourning the fact that there will be no traditional midnight mass with fire and with brass this year at St. Peter's. I am mourning the fact that Elizabeth and I won't be able to open our home to our family and friends for our annual Christmas parties that span usually two consecutive nights during the season. An open house for her congregation here at St. John's and a dinner for my choir at St. Peter's. I'm mourning that our annual tradition of getting dressed up and going into the city for a nice dinner and Christmas music concert won't happen. I've been so sour and quite frankly selfish all in all of this that I've contemplated very seriously not decorating the house this year and maybe even skipping Christmas like Tim Allen tried to do in that comedic Christmas movie with the cranks. Not a joke. And then this evening that famous video of Linus from a Charlie Brown Christmas came up as a suggestion on my YouTube feed. Could it have been a sign from God? Daniel continues, as I listened to those words from Luke's gospel, so simple and true, I began to tear up. Another effect that 2020 has had on me. The tears this time were because in the midst of sorrow, and yes, my own selfish feelings, I began to think about nothing, not even a relentless virus that is wreaking havoc on the world as we speak can take away what happened 2,000 years ago in a lowly manger in Bethlehem. It can't stop Christmas from coming, no matter what the Grinch tells you. But seriously, he continues, have you ever noticed how when Linus recites the story of the birth of Jesus that he lets go of his security blanket? And it made me wonder, could it be that I made a security blanket out of the things that I mentioned above? After all, the birth of Jesus didn't take place among pageantry, glamour, wealth, and material goods. It took place in a grungy den for cattle with a young couple, who no doubt were scared beyond all belief. And yet, it was good. It was beautiful. It was a gift. It was a miracle. I've now come to the realization that I need to let go of my security blanket and focus on those words that Linus so eloquently recited. They stand alone as something more powerful than any pandemic or any evil in the world because they are something that can never be taken away from us, no matter what. I think it's no coincidence that when Charles Schultz wrote a Charlie Brown Christmas that he lets the gospel story speak for itself. And the only thing that Linus said as follows up was, that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. 
We all have our security blankets of what will make Christmas. Whether it be lights, gatherings, singing, or decorations. And we are afraid that if we lay those things aside and lay those things down, Christmas won't come. We are afraid that Christmas won't be Christmas if we can't gather as a community in a church and to sing our beloved Christmas carols. We are afraid that Christmas won't be the same or come at all if we cannot be with our loved ones. And this year has caused us to cling more tightly to our security blankets. Yet as Linus speaks these words, fear not, he drops his security blanket. He is no longer afraid. And he continues to recite from the gospel, For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Do we continue to cling to our security blankets after hearing the good news the angels bring? Do we continue to hold tight our blanket, or do we drop it and cling to Jesus? Jesus' birth came into the world without all the pageantry of Christmas that we are familiar with. It didn't come with music, lights, and tinsel. Our Savior came to us in a smelly stable to unwed parents who became outcasts from their community and would soon become refugees. The light of the world came to us at night and promises that darkness can never overcome it. And while we cannot gather in our familiar traditional way, Christmas still comes whether we are ready for it or not. God's love breaks through into the human realm through the infant Jesus. His love shatters the hold of sin and death, and his love offers us a new life through the cross and resurrection. However you are celebrating Christmas this year, remember this. To you, is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. May the light of Christ, of the Christ child, fill you in these dark times, for Christ was born for you. Let us pray. Thanks be to God, the creator of heaven and earth, and all that is good. Thanks be to God, the Redeemer of the world, who through the miracle of Christmas gave us Jesus, who being raised from the dead will never die again. Thanks be to God, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, who is full of surprises, and who won't hesitate to move within us if we open our hearts to hear the good news. Thanks be to God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, let us affirm our faith in the words from the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and not unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in a Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for your whole Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially for the most reverend Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the most reverend Michael Curry, our presiding bishop. For the Right Reverend Eugene Sutton, our Bishop. For the Right Reverend Robert Gilhoff, our Assisting Bishop. For our Rector, Reverend Elizabeth Santos. For the Wardens, Vestries, Staff, and all members and friends of St. John's Church. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially for Donald, our president, Joseph, our president-elect, for Larry, our governor, Jack, Brandon, and John, who lead our city and county, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. And may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask, ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in, in thought, word, and deed, by God, what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people and your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ is will come again. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Saint John and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation by him and with him and in him and the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever amen and now as our savior christ has taught us we are bold to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Passover is sacrificed for us. They are here for us to keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
together we pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us, living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food, the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage. into the world to love and serve and proclaim the birth of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 